FN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. And welcome. You're listening to the Financial Survival Network. It's Kerry Lutz. And one of my favorite sites out there is peakprosperity.com. Chris Martinson, you've heard him here many times. What I really like is we're not talking fear. We're not talking doom and gloom. We're talking facts. We're talking empirical evidence, not I feel this, I think that, and maybe. And Chris has a scientific approach, fact-based Chris, welcome back. Hope all is well. Thank you, Kerry. It's good to be back with you. Yeah, so look, uh, we're obviously approaching something. I just think, well, I don't want to say I feel, I hope, whatever, but it appears based on activity in the bond market, based on yields increasing in spite of record QE taking place around the world, that we're in for something here. What's your take on what's occurring now and what we're in for? Well, Carrie, it's it's simply we are in the mother of all bubbles. Unfortunately, this time it's not swampland in Florida or a railroad in Western Canada or a few tulips in Holland. It This involves the whole world. And uh, nobody wants to admit that nobody in power wants to admit that that we've overdone it and that we've, uh, you know, just printed our way into a, a real box. So bubbles... Uh, by nature, the, the the bigger they are, the longer they take to the top, the longer they take to blow out. Uh, so, you know, here's my favorite bubble sign from from yesterday, courtesy of Zero Hedge. They, they sleuthed down a, a new IPO. Axon is the ticker symbol, A-X-O-N, for a, a biotech company. Sounds exciting, right? And they've got an Alzheimer's drug. Super exciting. IPO's out, doubles in price, a billion and a half market cap. And Zero Hedge surfaced it out and, and took a look and said, wow, this company has no cash in the bank. Uh, it's, it's seven employees. Uh, one is the 29-year-old CEO, quote unquote, who launched this thing. Another is his mother. Another is his sister. So that's three out of seven. Uh, and, and they have a, an off-the-shelf drug that failed clinical trials that they bought off of GlaxoSmithKline and just pushed it out into the market. Bang, a billion and a half. I don't want to begrudge this 29-year-old anything. I hope he cashes his stock in and sends us all photos from his yacht. But what a stupid mania we're in. Here we are again. That's clear. That's just a, an anecdote of bubble behavior. But boy, we've seen it in bonds. We've seen it in all sorts of equities. We look at valuations. Anything fundamental, carry is just screaming, overvalued, overbought, over everything. But thank you, central banks. That's what they tried to engineer. That's what they gave us. What they couldn't do is uh, they couldn't give us the corresponding economic growth that would justify all of this. So we're topping. We're topping out. And um, when this all tips over, carry it's going to be really ugly. Well, maybe we can import some Chinese uh, housewives. They can keep any market going indefinitely, can't they? <laughs> well, yeah, I hope they learn from the Japanese housewives who are who are busy trading the yen and, and the Nikkei and all of that. This is just, it's pure speculation all the time. You know, I, like when gold gets hammered, somebody says, oh, well, Chris, I read that gold went down because Chinese are losing interest. And I'm like, no, if you want to know what happened with gold, look at this on a one minute time scale. You'll see this massive dumping that happened in gold, but now overlay that with a chart of the yen or the US dollar. And you'll see that there's a set of speculators who are arbitraging across markets. They're making money by, you know, piling in and, and dumping on this, but but being short that. And, and that's how they make their money. So gold is going down because somebody's making money speculating on it doing that. And that's the system we live in. It's all speculators at this point. And I guess I went to school for the wrong thing, obviously. At least with tulips, you're left after the market bust. You got pretty flowers with houses. At least there's houses left standing until they crumble from neglect. But when you got paper, once that goes bust, you got nothing. <laughs> That's right. And uh, it's going to be pretty astonishing when this one goes bust. But, you know, people have really uh, bought into a, a set of things that are fundamentally false, you know, and we all want to believe the lie. That's the thing about bubbles. By definition, the majority of people can't see them. Otherwise, you wouldn't have the bubble. So the majority of people still believe in a number of things. They believe all our official statistics about GDP, about unemployment, about, uh, you know, initial claims. There's all kinds of, all you have to do is scratch at those statistics you can discover for yourself. They're really kind of junky at this point, getting worse. And people believe that the Fed's got their back and people believe that 
uh, you know, the banks that are too big to fail or jail are, will remain that way. So, so we're holding all of these belief systems without trundling over to the other side of the reality ledger and saying, for $200 trillion of worldwide debt, plus another $100 trillion in worldwide equity valuations, how much does the world have to grow to even just pay those claims back? And the answer is a whole lot more than it's been growing for 10 years running. Nobody wants to admit that growth as we knew it is over and uh, that our, therefore all of our financial assets are overpriced. So that's a potential energy situation. When it, when it starts, uh, our prediction at peak prosperity, and I know a lot of people share this, it's going to happen quick. And sites like Zero Hedge, like Peak Prosperity, like Financial Survival Network, were just perceived by the mainstream as doomer sites, were written off, marginalized, and just uh, really taken with a grain. And yet, uh, we look at the downside. I remember reading a book by Donald Trump, The Art of the Deal. He said when he enters into a deal, he doesn't look at the upside. He always looks at his downside. What can go wrong? Nobody's looking at what can go wrong. They're only looking at the upside. So uh, do we get the last laugh here? And do we want the last laugh? <laughs> yes and no, respectively. Yes, we're going to have the last laugh. Fundamentals always went out. Uh, you know, this is going to take longer than, than normal. But uh, no, uh, we're, I'm not going to be looking forward to, to laughing because my position is 2008 was actually the, the end of the credit cycle. And we should have owned up to it at that point in time. The bad debts should have gone bad. The owners of those bad debts should have taken the losses. Better luck next time. You know, do your due diligence, caveat emptor, whatever we want to apply to that. Citibank should have been wiped out. Everybody who had a bond or an equity position in that uh, company should have lost all their money. And then next time they would say, wow, I'm not, I will be more careful. Uh, but we didn't. What we did instead was we said we can't say to ourselves that this credit bubble, which started in the late 70s, was over. Instead, we're going to double down on it. We're going to continue the credit bubble because we can't face the possibility. Unfortunately, 2008, I think we were probably five steps up the step ladder. Now we're probably 42 steps up an extension ladder. The fall from this height is going to be deadly. Yeah. I heard there was a new derivative out. I have no way of knowing if it's true. I can't find any evidence, but I hear that rents, uh, payments on rents of these houses that the hedge funds have purchased have formed the basis of a new derivative, the cash flows on rental properties. They're selling derivatives on those now. Um, you heard anything about this? Do we have any way of verifying that this is true? Uh, well, I, I haven't heard about that one. Uh, I, I would not surprise be surprised to, to find out that's true because uh, we're seeing subprime auto loans in excess of what we saw before. Uh, we're seeing, you know, that the FHA basically took over the subprime mortgage lending. You know, if you go to a regular bank, you need 20% down on a typical uh, house at this point in a certain credit score. FHA, no such thing. 3%, good to go. FICO, 650, good to go. Uh, and so we're seeing lots and lots of ways that if you have really poor credit, no problem, you'll get, you'll get access to funds and funding and the same betting behaviors are not only with us again, but they're back in greater force than they were in 2008. Why? Because the big banks learned a very important lesson first in 1998 with a long-term capital management, then again, then again, that they can take as much risk as they want, keep the gains from that. When it all blows up, they'll be handed taxpayer money to be made hold again. I, I can't fault them for it. I mean, Kerry, if I had that deal, I'd take it all day long too. But people should try to not be surprised when it blows up again. And then it's not enough to just diagnose the problems here, Chris. Solutions uh, for the individual, for you out there who have a little bit of savings, who have some equity in your house, what do you do, Chris? How do you, how do you protect yourself for the inevitable? Well, it, it, for us, it, it, it seems pretty simple. You, 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 you know, debt is your stone cold killer when you get into uh, what we think is the next financial crisis is going to come. We think it's fundamentally going to be deflationary in nature because of all the debt outstanding. We think that you know asset prices are going to come tumbling down. And we'll see what we saw in 2008, only worse. People will lose jobs again. Uh, incomes will be slashed. Uh, you know, People will take losses on portfolios, making them feel poor. All of that will have to sort of sort itself out. So deflation is first. That, that's why we say debt is a stone-cold killer, particularly high-interest-bearing debt, student loans, auto loans, credit cards, HELOCs, get out of them. 
uh, if you can. If you've done that and you've got money left over, you have to have a core position in gold uh, and silver, but gold is our, our uh, number one position holder because we think that you know everything we've seen in the banking system says that you know your bank deposit is really a liability of the banks, and that liability is probably 13th on the list uh, of people who are going to get their money back if the bank goes uh, gets into trouble, goes into receivership. You're, you're literally almost last on the list. Uh, derivative holders are at the top of the list. So uh, if you have money in the bank, just you have to be mentally prepared that it's going to get locked into that system. You might lose it. And when all of this is happening, even if you have money in the bank, but you can't get to it, and the dollar is suddenly collapsing or fiat currency is collapsing, you're kind of screwed. So we think that having gold to us represents the only monetary asset we know about that you can pull out of the system that is not somebody else's liability. It's just an asset. Nothing else can touch it on that basis. So, so that's amazing. If you have a house, lots of investments you can make today that will be money out the door today, but you'll be putting less money out the door in the future. Home efficiency improvements, putting things like solar thermal panels on to get you hot water from the sun, even solar photovoltaics, insulating tons of ideas that for a lot of people who own homes are, are some of the best investments they can make. Internal rates of return, high double digits, sometimes even triple digits. So there's things people can do, but first is to get out of this mindset that investing, air quotes, investing means you give your money to Wall Street, cross your fingers, hope for the best. We think that's a sucker's play right now. Yeah, it makes, makes a lot of sense there. Debt, not your friend. You can just see the student loan bubble. They're all blowing, blowing and blowing and getting bigger and bigger. And, you know, these bubbles, uh, they all uh, wind up uh, the same way, don't they? In tears, Gary. They always end up in tears. Yeah. And on that note, uh, best place to find you, Chris? peakprosperity.com. And if I could just put a short pitch in, we've got a, something called the New Story Festival that's in Connecticut, where I'll be presenting this uh, Saturday. And there's a VIP dinner on Friday night, which is tonight. So anybody last minute wants to check into that, they can do that. And there's information at my website and my Facebook page, how to come to that. All right. And as always, you'll find the link to Chris's site in the show notes to this uh, interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Sounds like a great event you'll be having there, Chris. And we will talk with you again soon. Be well. Have a great weekend, Kerry. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. 